Now, I've seen YouTube videos from other Chelsea channels, one calling the players gutless, spineless sponges, others saying all Pochettino's fault. My God, before the game at the weekend, they're all singing and praising the fact that we've turned this, ourselves around on a four-game unbeaten run, and we're now seeing some form of identity. But for one performance, snap, it changes again. And my God, I could sit and do videos the way that these people do on their channels. They're in the hundreds, over 100,000 subscribers doing this sort of thing full time for a living. I'd love to do this full time for a living, but I refuse point blank to post up reactionary, instant reactionary, just ridiculous videos to get clicks because that's what they're doing. Do you honestly believe that Chelsea on the Saturday against Brentford were gutless, spineless sponges? Really? Do you really believe that that's Pochettino's fault? In answer to the Pochettino fault thing, look at the bench. Hardly anybody on it because of the amount of injuries that we've got. We had limited options to change things up. We had to bring David Washington on as, as the only real attacking option that we had. And injuries are just affecting us big time. But let's go back to the game against Brentford. And we started off that first half fantastically well, just didn't take our chances. The fact of the matter is Chelsea struggle to break down teams that play a low block. And you have to hold your hands up and say Brentford delivered a tactical performance they trained for all week, they prepared all week, and they executed on match day. Chelsea did the same against Arsenal. In the box midfield, Arsenal couldn't deal with it for most of that game, and but for two mistakes, we would have won it. Brentford delivered the same sort of tactical performance that Chelsea did, and we accepted our performance. Brentford fans will be elated because they come to Stamford Bridge and did it again. And Chelsea will have the same old problem unless we come up with something to try and break these low block teams down. Nicholas Jackson was getting abuse from the Chelsea fans or from a Chelsea fan and had to do that as he came off the pitch and Pochettino asked for the fans to get behind the team. And Nicholas Jackson is just trying to settle into this league. The problem, and I keep saying it, I said it in my live match commentary on the weekend, is Jackson wants to impress everyone. He wants to run everywhere, non-stop, just come deep, go wide out on the byline, get into areas where we don't need him to be because he should stick to the whip for the penalty box and make himself into a, a target man or a link man and play that particular role, not everywhere. So I do get Chelsea fans' frustration with him. But the guy's trying, working his arse off. The problem that we had was, because he's making those runs, we are playing balls into the box and nobody was there. But then you could sit and call out Raheem Sterling for his performance. Up for it in the last few weeks, playing just destroyed Burnley. Absolutely destroyed Burnley. Played well against the Arsenal. Played well in other games. But in this particular game, drifted in and out. The way Chelsea will beat teams with a low block is to move the ball quickly, get it wide and just play passes between the lines urgently, quick to force the, the, the defenders to turn around and get balls into the box with late runs. The balls into the box we were playing at the weekend weren't great or if they were put in the box there was nobody in there because of people's positions or people not making gambles to go near post or back post. You watch the Man City game, Man United, yesterday. They get to the byline. They've got, they've got it set. Someone goes towards the near post or takes the goalkeeper, which takes the defender away, and there's Haaland back post, free header bang, and he scores. Chelsea need to do that, to come up with something where they, they have a set move or, I don't know, a routine where they get to a byline, people in positions, and just taking up different positions in the box to give us options. Drill it to near post, lift it to far, that's what we need to be doing. But Chelsea played well first half. They just couldn't get the breakthrough for one reason or another. You know, Madueke come closest by hitting the stanchion between the crossbar and the post. But Chelsea had a lot of joy turning Brentford around. Now, we were hit with a sucker punch second half because, again, defensively, you cannot switch off at the back post. It's simple defensive mistakes that we're making. And we've all seen the image of Thiago Silva, who's livid, just 
just rage. You can see how just enraged he is. Eyes shut, shouting his head off, turned his back, get away from the goal because he saw what happened. He saw we've been caught out again. And these are something that we need to just continually work on to stop happening. Now, we all knew what was going to happen. As soon as Sanchez went up, if that corner wasn't delivered the right, the right way and we were first to the ball or first to the second ball, we were in trouble. I called it on my commentary. I said, and I quote, this will go one way or the other. And unfortunately, it went the other. Now, as for Pochettino, this is all of his fault. He's playing with the cards he's been dealt because of injuries. He didn't have a lot of options to change. But then you're relying on your players that you're picking to go out and deliver performances and have an influence in game. And for the most part, we did. But we got caught because what Brentford did, and I kept saying it in my live commentary, you could clearly see their tactical formation in defensive positions. They would sit with a back five on the, on the edge of their penalty box. The midfield three was sitting five, ten yards in front of them, and the two up front were sitting five, ten yards in front of the midfielders. They were defending no higher than 30 yards away from their byline, condensing the space in front of their defenders to force Chelsea wide. And when they did that, the midfielders that planned as part of that three-man midfield would walk across and make two men to beat. Sometimes even the centre-back would come over and we'd pick the ball up on the wing and you're faced with three Brentford defenders to beat until it went the other side and the same thing happened. That was because we allowed Brentford time to get into their shape, because we allowed them time to get organised and to get people from side to side. We were moving it, looking for an option quickly, couldn't find it, and go backwards and sideways. It was almost as if Jorginho was playing again. The problem is, is that Chelsea need to look up, and before these teams playing a low block get defensively set, play the ball into the feet of Palmer or Stern or somebody else that comes in off the byline as they're trying to get back in, play it forward, play it quickly, and just play attacking fast football because that's what Chelsea are at their best. That's when they're at their best, and that's the only way you're going to beat these teams playing a low block. We need to be patient. We need to make sure we can open the door. We did it numerous times, but we can't afford to make defensive mistakes that we did in the game in the corner. As I said, it's just an absolute shambles. It's happened just before. It's no surprise. We can't go from, from, from just praising the fact we went four games unbeaten with four good performances to just switching like that. You can't go from one extreme to another. I'm as disappointed as anybody else with the fact that we've lost the games we've lost this season. I could see when we had the other players available to us last week that we got some sort of an identity with what we're trying to do. Mudrich was a big miss. To just have the Sterling and Madueke and Jackson as, as the, the, the recognised, ex experienced attacking three with no real replacement for them. And then Ogutchukwu in the middle of midfield you're always going to struggle. You're always going to struggle if you need to change things up. And that's what happened. The players weren't gutless. They weren't spineless. It's just ridiculous things to say. And we just have to be realistic, people. You know, I'm just, I've stopped going, thinking just far too, too negative and going down that road because it's easy. I want us to do something different and I want us to be different. And I want us to be looking at what we potentially could be, what we've seen at times where we, we have been, and when we get these players back in, what we are going to be. Don't jump on the bandwagon, people. See you next time.